Uh, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We're excited to welcome Oliver L. Velez, the inaugural keynote speaker of the First Traders Expo, an international best-selling author, and a world-renowned trader. Mr. Velez, thanks for being here. The floor is yours. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much for having me once again. I want to thank the audience for joining me today. I think we have a very, um, I think a very important and a very valuable lesson to cover today. And so I want you all to get settled, uh, grab the beverage of your choice, um, have something ready to take notes. Uh, because I will try to, in a very short period of time, power pack this presentation and with some um, some money making techniques that you should be able to instantly begin using, especially in today's market. So, traders, I am not going to waste a lot of time since my time is limited here, going over you know who I am in a very extended way, but. Um, Tomorrow, I do want you to know that I will also be giving a talk on my four-year wealth plan. So if you're available, I strongly encourage that you um, pipe in, uh, get pre-registered for that event as well. That's going to be extraordinarily important. I think that not only should we focus on trading to generate income, but there should be a dual effort to you know, employ actions that generate generational wealth. So we do both. I want you to do both. And so tomorrow I'll be covering that. Today, our topic is going to largely be focused on trading, um, income-oriented trading, but using support and resistance. All right. So for those of you who are looking to know who I am, uh, you can read through all of this. You can do some research if you like. Um, but I will tell you a story very quickly just to give you an idea, a very brief story of quickly to give you an idea of how long I've been in this space. Um, one, of the one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, Oliver, um, I noticed that the vast majority of the time you're wearing you know, shades. And why is that? And uh, a lot of people think it's to look cool, um, uh, even though I believe I do. <laughs> but um, I traded for a great many years on Wall Street staring at monochrome screens. Some of you are too young to know what even monochrome screens are. They're the, the computer screens that were basically black in the background and green lettering. And we read news, we read the ticker tape, uh, we read all market activity through this monochrome screen. Um, it turns out obviously that those weren't the greatest for your eyes and anyone who spent an inordinate amount of time staring at monochrome screens typically develop some type of eye issue. So today for me, any little light is at times extraordinarily painful for my eyes. And so I sort of dim the light. So I have a light on top of my camera. There's a light from the computer screen um, that affects my eyes. So that's the main reason. And that's to give you a general idea of how long I've been in this space since the mid 1980s all the way to now. All right. All right, guys, um, please follow me um, on my social media networks if you can. Guys, listen, I have one of the most popular YouTube trading channels, one of the fastest growing YouTube trading channels on YouTube, Oliver Velez Trading. I have those channel, I have that channel in three different languages. All right. I strongly encourage that you follow me there. I spend a great deal of time every single day making sure I put out some piece of content that's dedicated to one thing, raising your level of market sophistication as a trader and as an investor, okay? Um, I do try to put out some content every single day on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter feed. I will tell you that if you're looking to contact me specifically, directly, Twitter is probably the, the best bet. It's the only social network where I specifically, personally answer. All the others are really handled by my team. Occasionally I do, but 100% of the comments are, are responded to by me on Twitter. Make sure that you get OL Velez 007 correct. There's a lot of in individuals or a lot of organizations or a lot of bots or whatever you call them that are really um, not me. So there's multiple accounts that are pretending to be me. You need to be very, very diligent. Make sure that you're truly um, communicating with me or with my account, okay? All right, so let's delve into the material, guys how to trade support and resistance. Now, the first thing I will tell you about the concept of support and resistance is that this is one of the small handful of things that can be used 
to earn your entire livelihood in the markets. Now, we don't have a great many of those things. A lot of things are supportive things. They are components of an overall approach, an overall system, um, or an overall method. This is not something, this is something, while this is something you can add to an existing method, you can, it can also stand alone as your method. So not only is support and resistance a technique, not only is it a, a, an approach, a strategy, or a technical item, it can actually be your entire trading method. And that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to focus here today. And there aren't many things that can stand alone as a method themselves. So this is extraordinarily important, traders. Um, I want to quickly show you what I made in eight minutes today, today using support and resistance. And I did this in eight minutes trading live and uh, with about 50 of my traders. We traded together this morning. And uh, I don't know if you can see in the lower right-hand corner, I think the, the, the gain wound up being $5,601. I did this in the first eight minutes of the trading day, and I'm going to specifically show you how I used support and resistance as the technique to generate this $5,600 gain inside of, eight, inside of an eight-minute period, okay? Now, the first thing I think it's important for us to do is to talk about the different types of support and resistance because there are differences, okay? We have uh, I have four here. It really should be five. It looks like three, four, five. Okay. So there are really five major types of support and resistance. That number at the top should be five. There's prior high and prior low support and resistance. So of course, prior high resistance, prior low support. Then there's minor high resistance and minor low support. That's type number two. And then you have moving average support and moving average resistance. And then, you, of course, you have gap support, gap resistance. And then you have percentage, percentage support and percentage resistance. Now, I believe that I believe I might be able to point to all of them today, but I will definitely zero in on the most frequently occurring types of support and resistance, okay? Now, I told you that I, I, you know, I picked up $5,600 off the open today uh, in the first eight, eight minutes of trading or so, or over an eight minute period of time. And I wanna delve into that particular trade. Now, what you're looking at guys is a, you're looking at a, a chart. It's a two minute chart actually of Meta, Facebook, uh, formerly known as Facebook. And obviously each bar represents two minutes of trading. Now, what I want to, what I want to show you is I want to show you that very quickly that Facebook or meta closes the prior day here. Okay. It opens this morning here, which means that obviously meta or Facebook gapped down. All right, quite severely this morning. Now, I got early indications, obviously, in pre-market trading that Facebook was trading down. I quickly took a look at Facebook, and here's what I saw. All right, I always look for the prior low area. So here's the prior low area of Facebook from the day before. Okay, so that is what I would call an area of... minor low resistance. So minor low resistance is when you are under, all right, we open here. So we are under the former or prior pivot low. What's a pivot low? It's the V, okay? And we find the most recent or the lowest one, the closest low, all right, the closest pivot low. So this area in all areas of support, all support and resistance are areas. They're not thin lines. They're zones of support and resistance. So you can't just, guys, you can't just say, okay, the low's here. No, it's the area of that pivot low. 
And so that is minor low resistance. I will explain to you briefly what major low resistance and support is. All right. But this is minor low resistance. Okay. And I believed that if Facebook were to get itself to this area, it would have trouble based on this resistance concept. Stocks coming back to their former minor or pivot low will tend to hit the bricks. Okay. Now that's number one. Remember that there is a moving average form of resistance. Let's take a look at that one. And so the red line that you see is the 200 period moving average. Now, remember, I'm going to teach you that your chart, your charting package or your charting program is going to lie to you. It's going to present moving averages and specific items as being very thin and very little. That's not the truth. This 200 period moving average is not as thin as the trading platform would have you believe. All right. It's a zone. So I want you to imagine that this is the 200 period moving average zone. It's almost as if that red line runs through the zone. Okay. So moving averages are very much like a, a fence that you can lean on. It's not a glass floor or ceiling that breaks at the first point of contact. It's almost like it serves as a boxing ring ropes, right? Where the boxer or the stock can lean against the ropes, but the ropes don't break. So there's, it's spongy. There's some leeway there. Okay. And so if you look at the 200 period moving average, you can realize that it's over Meta's price activity. And if Meta were to rise to that 200 period moving average zone, it would likely hit the brakes. Now, look at this. We've got both types. We've got two types of resistance coming together. We've got the former pivot zone, the former pivot low zone, and the 200 period moving average zone very close to each other providing a dual level of resistance my guys just one of these resistance points is powerful when you start to stack them together and they start creating this concrete ceiling above the price activity it's going to be very difficult for your stock to break through dual layers of resistance. Even one layer of resistance is very difficult. Dual layers, more difficult, all right? So we've got former low or what I call minor low, pivot low resistance, and we've got 200 period moving average resistance coming together kind of in the same zone, all right? In addition to that, remember I told you that there's a there's something called gap resistance. Well, there's a, there, was a, there was a saying that's been prevalent in the markets for a very long period of time. The saying goes that all gaps are filled. It's not true, but there's a strong enough tendency for a stock to fill its gap than not to fill its gap. Or I should say, there's a very, there's more of a, there, there's more of a strong tendency for a stock to attempt to fill its gap than not to attempt to fill its gap. It's not to attempt to fill its gap, right? So stocks that particularly gap sizably to the downside, even the upside, but we're talking the downside here, there's that hole creates a vacuum. And often the stock will be drawn into that vacuum. Okay. You see, the market doesn't like to miss spots. I remember my mother used to make me sweep the kitchen floor as part of my chores after she cooked. And she would say, Oliver, you missed a spot. Go back. And that's almost as, as that's almost like what the market is. Oh my God, I gapped and I missed a spot. And so the market tries to go back and fill it with price activity. All right. And so there was a strong tendency. This morning, Facebook 
or meta gaps down and get sucked right into that gap. But once, now look at this, once the majority of the space, see the former price activity here and the start of the day here, the stock fills the space and hits the brakes. So now we don't have we don't have just one or two. We have three types of price. We have three types of resistance stacked on top of each other, which gave me tremendous confidence. Tremendous confidence that Facebook was going to run into our freaking brick wall. Do you understand? And drop and maybe drop and give back all of its gains. All right. So once again, we've got prior low price resistance zone. Okay. We've got, <laughs> we've got 200 period moving average resistance zone. I'm salivating. You understand? And then we've got gap for gap fill resistance zone. Now look at that thick concrete zone of resistance. There's practically, I've seen this millions of times, traders. There's practically no way. I'm not saying there's a zero probability. I'm saying it's closer to zero than a certain prob probability that that's going to get through all three of those things. All right. And there's a psychological reason why this happens, guys. Let me quickly to tell you what resistance is in the first place. Resistance areas are nothing more than negative memory built into the market. And let me explain to you what negative memory is. All right. So let's say, for instance, you are holding Facebook or Meta from the day before. Okay. So the day before, you're, you're long meta and you hold it into this morning. You're holding the stock overnight. And then all of a sudden you experience a debilitating, how many points is that? What is that? You experience something like a, a five, a four, five dollar hit. Now this, depending upon your size, could be anywhere from, you know, 10,000 to 50,000 to a hundred thousand dollar loss. There's, it's one thing to grind down into a loss, to experience a 10 or 20 or $30,000 loss over time. That's more palatable, believe it or not. But when you get it instantly on trade number one, all right, this, create, this sends a shock to the system. It shocks those who are holding the stock. Now, what a lot of these shock traders do is see, is it possible, my God, for me to recoup some of these gains? All right, let me see if Meta is going to rise so that I can minimize my 10,000 to maybe 6,000 or 3,000 or whatever. And so they watch very carefully. And all of a sudden, that strength gives them hope that potentially they can make all of their loss back. And they're hoping, hoping, hoping. And what do you think the likelihood, what is the likelihood for of them, what's the higher odds of them um, buying or selling? Which one is higher? Right there selling. Why? Because they got their loss back. They, their, their attitude is like, I'm not going to lick a, lick, lick, lick a gift horse in the mouth. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth twice. Thank God I got my money back. I'm out of here. That point, that increased selling at that point, that let me get my money back sell point creates a tremendous degree of pressure on the stock. In addition to that, traders like me and my traders know that that spot's a big shorting point. So the shorters dive in, adding to the people selling to get their money back. And as it starts going down, momentum starts to build, all right, on the sell side, on the sell side, on the sell side, and an avalanche typically occurs. And so that's what resistance is. It's 
if you can develop the ability to pinpoint on a chart where it's clear people got hurt, you can, if you find the origin of where the pain began, that's going to be a key resistance point. This is the origin of where the pain began. And they got their money back by moving, by the stock moving back into its origin. And so if you know my work or the way I trade, we follow my work for any limited period of time. You know, I'm, I'm shorting on the way up right into this 200 period moving average. My orders are sitting, waiting up there. Facebook moves right into my order. Short, 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 short. I have a stop like somewhere up here, just in case. And that's the most wonderful sound in trading, by the way. There you go. All right. And so this was a, um, a nice little quick uh, two, four, six, nice little quick drop to the downside, uh, which gave me my $5,600 gain. Now, this is a multi-point move. It may not look big to some of you on the, on the screen here, but this is a huge move from uh, nearly 200 and well, 216 all the way back to 213. So uh, nice move there. So that's one thing. Now, let's take a look at, um, let us take a look at, wait a minute. So this is gap resistance minor low resistance, 200 period moving average resistance coming at the same time. Let's talk about prior low resistance or what I would call major low resistance, all right? And I'll, I'll explain what the difference is very quickly here. So remember I told you that resistance is largely nothing more than a negative memory point built into the market. Where did people start, uh, start where was the origin of pain? Well, support, is nothing more than the origin of a reward, an origin of something good, right? And so if you look at this opening point, there are some traders that knowing this sucking feature of a, of a big gap where the market says, wait a minute, I missed a spot and it gets sucked back into the gap at first. A lot of traders buy immediately off the open who know that phenomenon. Like many of my traders will buy this. Once they see a little bit of green off the open on a big gap like that, they will buy with a stop under the low. And when, they, and when, the, when the low goes, they get stopped out, but a lot of them just rip right into the gap. And so it just becomes a numbers game, right? Small losses, big gains, small losses, big gains. All right, so many of my traders will buy this right off the open once a little bit of green starts to form. Boom, 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 boom. Like that, right? Now, Stock moves back into my resistance point. I'm shorting, right? This drops all the way back to what? What zone? The reward zone. My traders who bought off the open have been rewarded. And I am telling you this. If Facebook were to come right back to where they got rewarded again, I am willing to guarantee you they're willing to try it again especially if they've been trained by me, they're going to try that point again. Do you understand? Because they were, they were rewarded from that point. You would try it again too. Well, the tendency is to try it again. All right. And so if, if this shows bullish tendencies, they're going to try it from this zone again. And there you go again. All right. So resistance is nothing more than the stock coming to the origin of a painful negative memory. Support is nothing more than coming back to a positive, favorable uh, memory. Now, this is important. The longer it takes to get to, or the further the stock runs before it gets to a memory point, the more powerful the memory point. That's very important to understand, traders. So see how this has traveled all the way from there, all the way back, all right? That's a long distance, okay? 
So by the time the bears reach the positive memory area, they've run out of steam. You see, the, the, the bears are the enemy of the positive memory point, but they have run out of steam. It's greater odds that they've run out of steam because they've run so long and so far. So it's different when your memory point is like this. All right, so here's your positive memory point there. But you but it's not falling very far to get back there. But if you were falling from here to the memory point, this would have greater odds of truly finding that support. This would have higher odds of breaking through. So the further you are traveling and the longer you are traveling before you get to one of these points the better the more powerful the point so this was far from this point it traveled far and long all right very important point there now check this out a lot of times you get this brief double bottom at support and this brief double top at resistance. Take a look that take a look at how Facebook forms this double bottom, first attempt, second attempt go. All right? That's a very common um that's a very common occurrence. I teach my traders that I I teach my traders to call that the double dip phenomenon. All right. So a lot of times you'll get that double dip near support and you can't be fooled by the double dip. The double dip will often shake traders off thinking that the bottom has failed, but you can't fall for that. All right. There's a tendency to double dip. I know double dipping and in, in, with chips and, and dip, that's not cool. But double dipping in the market is really cool because oftentimes the stock that double dips will actually have a stronger than normal move, all right? It's almost like stepping back twice to go forward. And that forward move is more powerful than stepping back once to go forward. So think of jumping over a puddle. If you step back two steps, you have greater odds of jumping over the puddle. If you only step back one step, you have your odds are diminished a little bit. This is stepping back once, stepping back twice, boom, or pulling a slingshot once, and then pulling it back one more time, and the velocity is greater on the second pullback, right? So here's your pullback one, here's your pullback two, that's the double dip phenomena, and what's that sound again? <sighs> Gotta love it. All right, now check this out. Here you're, all, you're coming all the way back. Where are you coming? Where are you coming back to? Do you see it? Do you see where you're coming back to? All right. We come all the way back to the negative memory point again. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, there's a little double dip right there. Check it out. Check it out. Do you see the double dip? Here's the first attempt. Boom and boom. All right. Now, you see how the 200 period moving average is up here. And yes, that is resistance. But you see how the resistance is milder? That's because it didn't come from all the way down here. If it came from all the way down here, it would likely be more violent. But see, it's coming from a shorter distance. So if you think about the stock as being a runner, it still has some steam left. It's not tired. It's not panting out of breath. I still have strength enough to break through you. All right? And so that concept of how far and long have you been running before you reach support and resistance is very key because you can tighten this concept up to be extraordinarily accurate if you narrow down to the support and resistance plays where the run has been long and far before the support or resistance point has been met. Very powerful. All right. How's my time looking here? How are we looking here, guys? All right. 
Oh, and I'm on my last, my last, my last one here. So guys, here we are. That was, that was taking one of my trades and showing you my trade and also showing you how a trader who stuck with that could actually play support and resistance multiple times this morning. That's this morning. Here's another stock, Cisco, same time frame. No, this is a five minute chart this time. Each bar represents five minutes of trading. And I'm going to show you the gap and 200 period moving average resistance points coming together at the same time. So guys, here is yesterday's close in Cisco, right? So you got yesterday's bar. This is yesterday's final bar. Okay. And here is where Cisco opens. It opens under. Now, it means that there's a gap here between this bar and where we open, there's a gap. Okay. Also, there's 200 period moving average resistance. So you've got the gap resistance point coinciding with the 200 period moving average resistance points. Point. That's crazy. All right. Crazy powerful. Now, check this out. What you have here originally, uh, how do I do this? I don't know how to do this, but that's okay. I was going to change the color, but all right. But anyway, look, so we, no, that's wrong. Okay. We move back up here, right? We first move up. You see, that's an up bar first off the open right into the low of the last bar yesterday and right into the 200. Now, that's not the play. I want you to imagine, um, can I, oh yeah, I know how, here's how to do it. I want you to imagine that this bar is green at the time that it runs back up there. It runs back up to the 200 and it's green at the time you're watching this. But what if the green were to disappear now? It's filled its gap. People have who lost from yesterday have gotten the majority of their money back. The 200 and the gap is up there like a concrete ceiling. If the green disappears, boom, 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 boom. Do you understand? So where does the green disappear? Right there. You see that? That's where I want to strike this stock. And so, okay, here's beautiful, beautiful. Boom. Look at that. Look at. Now the green, so I get less green, less green, less green, less green. And right before, I mean, as I get half green, all right, when half of the green disappears, I start salivating. All right, I'm ready. I'm salivating. I won't dare wipe until I strike. Boom, once the green is gone, here's my strike point. Then I can, I can wipe after. I can wipe after. It's okay. It's okay to wipe after, guys. Boom. All right, protective stop. And the rest is history. Now, very quickly, I will tell you, I will show you very briefly, and then I'm done. If we take this move all the way to the low, you know, that's that entire move. And we cut that baby in half. All right. I want you to cut it in half. Now, let's cut it right in half. Boom. Now remember, I told you everything is a zone, right? There's a halfway zone. This would be the resistance, 50% resistance area after a move. So moves tend to drop and come back to a 50% resistance area and resume their what they started on the left-hand side. And so if you look very carefully, we've got drop, 50% drop. And my traders are all over this. Do you understand? They're looking for gap resistance. They're looking for prior high resistance. They're looking for um, prior low resistance. They're looking for 200 period moving average resistance. They're looking for 50% retracement resistance. And when these things stack together, Oh my goodness. All right. And so there you are, guys. I wish I had more time to share with share these things with you, but I am hoping that some of you are uh, will be interested 
and joining my team, guys. I continue, continue to recruit from my trading team where we sit with these things every single day. We trade live with these things every single day. And I, and I tell you to put your capital away. Trade my capital. It's the best way to learn. The best way to learn is to utilize someone else's capital. Use your capital later. All right. So anyway, guys, I want to um, I want to share with you, but I do want to encourage you. You can do this. This is not rocket science. This is a lot simpler. It's not easy. There's, there's a difference between simple and easy, but it's a lot simpler than most people believe. And I believe that the vast majority of people are overcomplicating things because they're bringing their their complexity to the market and the market doesn't really have a great deal of complexity. All right. And so you can do this. It's not rocket science. The best way to learn anything is to be mentored by someone who's already there. You want to diminish your journey, right? Diminish the, 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 the time it takes to become a master by having someone who has become a master right by your side. And that's what we do here. My most popular program, guys, is called the Equity Self-Start Program. I fund every trader starting with $50,000. And we work on tactics like this every single day of your life, all right? You don't have the pressure of losing your own capital. I take 100% of the losses. We share the gains, all right? You have to pass, the, pass a test, of course, but most of you should be able to do that if you follow what you're supposed to follow. And I've helped hundreds, if not thousands of traders all over the world get into this game professionally and have this game sort of help support them in their lives. Uh, tomorrow I'll be delving more in the wealth program, but I do have a program for, for building generational wealth. So I want my traders building income and the inc through their trading, but the income that's not needed should be diverted to building generational wealth with longer term plays. And that's what we'll be talking about a little bit tomorrow, guys. Look, the prices for these programs, I believe are extraordinarily reasonable. You get funded in a program for life and trained every single day for $2,000 Come on, you can lose that in a trade. We're talking about one fee for the rest of your life and me by your side. All right, trade for wealth program is one fee for life. For the rest of your life, we play the markets for wealth forever, $5,000. But look, 72 hours, this price is on $1,500, guys. It's a dinner with your family with a couple of bottles of wine. All right, one fee for the rest of your life and you're funded for the rest of your life and you're trained every single day for the rest of your life. There is no expiration to these programs and wealth, come on, that's crazy. For the rest of your life, trading along with me, knowing every single thing that I do on the wealth side. And as a bonus, I will throw in my Bitcoin trading club membership for life as well. This is huge, guys. We were up 800% a year just here, all right? And so I strongly encourage that you join me tomorrow. For those of you who are interested in anything regarding joining my team, getting funded, or anything to that nature, my, I believe my team is present. You can contact us, of course, at ifundtraders.com or oliverveles.com. Thank you so very much for joining us. I hope you come back to see me tomorrow, all right? Ciao for now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Velez. We appreciate your time today. Thank you.